Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson, and today, Mike Hudson, he's back, and he's back with more spectacular news about their project down there in Victoria. It's the Sunday Creek Project, and uh, I think Mike is calling it, it just keeps getting bigger and better. So I want to talk about today's announcement with you, Mike. I want to find out what's going on down there. I think you've got three rigs on site at the moment. We won't go over who are uh, Southern Cross Gold because we've done it before. Uh, the ASX code is SXG. You're pretty happy, Mike. Welcome back to Small Caps. What's going on? What's these drill holes? What's happening? Well, we put out a result uh, today, Kerry, that the 50th hole in 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 the prospect, and it was a hole that was targeted targeted 50 meters under the middle part of the the uh, the prospect, as we understand it today, underneath the rising sun shoot. It continued in mineralization so we didn't stop so it was meant to finish at about 350 meters okay. we kept drilling we kept uh we, we stayed in the mineralized zone so we kept drilling and drilling and uh and it just finished the hole literally this morning and it's down in 23 meters but we produced results from the top two-thirds of the hole down okay. to 650 meters today so that 650 meters averaged uh you know 300 and five metres thereabouts at 2.4 grams gold equivalent, which is 1.6 gold, uh, 1.6 grams gold and half a percent antimony. Uh, and there was eight new shoots. So the higher grade parts, it's really eight individual shoots, never seen before, double the depth, basically double the number of shoots on the prospect as we understand it today. So, uh, and it, the, it's getting better at depth. There's higher grades. There was 12 individual intersections that went greater than 20 grams so there was five that went greater than 100 grams right across that 300 meters so um in context with what we found above which are you know is short cutting 1900 gram meter uh, intersections uh, gold equivalent on a cumulative basis this is this is a phenomenal result above and then we've just uh, gone and put this hole below and found things that we didn't even know existed when you say you finding things that didn't you didn't even know existed, you're just saying that this this keeps getting bigger and better at depth. Is that what you mean? Yeah, what I mean is uh, we've doubled the depth, so the the zones continue at depth, but we've also found eight new shoots that we didn't know existed. They weren't above at surface, and we've drilled this hole at depth and found them in a gap where it hadn't been drilled. So, you know, the system is just uh, continuing to 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 throw up new parts that uh, that were gaps and uh, undrilled, but you know it hadn't shown any mineralization at the upper levels of the system, but they hadn't been tested <laughs> other than the old timers mining too. Um, you you're fairly you're down in Victoria. You're fairly close to Foster Fosterville and, and Costafield. Um, is it a, something similar? I mean, these are quite decent grades that you're finding, and I remember. Back in the day, it took them a while to understand the Fosterville gold mine. It seems to me like you're almost fast tracking. Um, is it, are you taking some, I guess, some knowledge from that? Is it the same or is it different? Help us unpack the understanding of it if you if you can. Yeah, sure. It's it's, it's the same mineral mineralizing event with, without a doubt. Okay. Well understood in the academic li literature. You know, twenty or thirty years of being written up as such. The the host rocks between Fosterville and Costafield are different ages, but that that is the only difference. And we're the same age rocks as Costafield, more or less. But it's it's not the host; it's the fluid event that form these. And and what is the 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 great thing about these deposits is they telescope, but they telescope over kilometres, not like hundreds of metres like an epithermal system does where you get your sweet spot in that few hundred yep. metres. What, what we've got and what FOIL is and what Costafield is is at the top 100 metres more or less are these gold antimony-rich systems. They form very good grades, but then below that where you get into the hotter fluids because the fluids are coming from... Um, the, the 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 that depths up, uh, you move into these uber high grades, and that's what Fosterville and Fosterfield are finding. The veins go from thin little, uh, you know, centimeter wide things to meters thick, um, and and we're starting to see those transitions in our prospect. You know, there's some beautiful photos of quartz carbonate veins 
thicker veins with visible gold in them. Now, those 500 gram plus meter intersections are, are indicative of that. And, and then, you know, it took 20 years for Fosterville to go from a, a pretty average deposit, you know, yep. 20 years of mining until the um, you know what they found at depth. Now, Fosterville was could it, you could have bought Fosterville in the day. I've been told I didn't bid on it for twenty, thirty, forty million dollars for that mine that spits out billions of dollars a year um, today. And and um, and that's because it was a, a pretty average refractory deposit before it became much better at depth. Now we don't have those refractory grades. We're more like Costafield, where that old timers mined it, and they didn't mine refractory grade on the old timers they had to have free gold so we're about 50 percent of the gold's free that details here but but how do you find one of these systems mm. without mining for 20 years was your question right yeah. while well, you stand back what we're doing and take big big drill holes underneath the system and see how it is developing and that's our strategy we're here to make this bigger you know, imagine if we just focused in on that top two or three hundred meters to drill out resources and not seeing what's developing down seven, eight hundred meters when we know the prize even gets better than what it is in the upper parts. Anyhow, that that that's what we thought long and hard about. How would you find another swan zone? And you could do it with lots of drilling, but you know, it wouldn't take 20 years. It took a couple of years with some deep drilling was our position when we were the these systems. So where to from here? You said uh, you've you've gone down, I think, to about nine nine hundred and fifty meters. You've got the results for the the top six six hundred six fifty. So you've got some more assay results to come, uh, hopefully before Christmas. That'd be a nice Christmas present. Um, and I know you can't talk about that yet, but knowing what you do about what you've seen so far, are you expecting it to be getting bigger at depth? Well, we've got to do a lot more drilling to prove that, but the concept is that the grades should continue to improve at depth because that's what happens in these systems. We've talked about that for 10 minutes now. Uh, I find it quite extraordinary. We drilled this hole within the mineralized host. So we're within the mineralized host, runs east-west, but at a high angle to the to the veins, high-grade veins, which are northwest. So the, the true thickness is 60 to 70%. We didn't drill the director's hole that everyone thinks when you look at a hole like this. But uh, I find it quite staggering that we can drill for 300-plus metres, plus let's see what happens in the last few hundred metres, within that one structure. Like it, it's in, it's in it, we've tried it near closer to surface and we drill out of it because it's only... 50 to 100 metres thick. Now, we're either very lucky or it's developing at thicker depth, the thicker um, down below at depth. We're drilling more holes. We've got three rigs, so we're drilling more holes around to try and get that three-dimensional shape and understanding why this is just so good and and, uh, and whether we're very fortunate or or, or um, it thickens at depth or a bit of both. And I, I guess from a... Uh... Our community, our listeners out there, to understand the strategy going forward. Because if you look, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, you can actually go to the website, which I think is southerncrossgold.com.au. Is that right? Because there's a 3D presentation, so you can actually go onto the homepage of Southern Cross Gold's website, and you can play around and have a look at what they've done to date. But I think more importantly, when you do that, you're going to see that. Actually, out of the whole area, Mike, you've only drilled quite a small chunk of it, if you like. Yeah, no, the system it, it extends seven kilometres. Only one kilometre has ever seen a drill hole, um, and we're we're drilling part of that now. So it's got room to become bigger, a long strike, and you know there's still a lot of gaps, and just doubling the, the number of shoots in this one hole so far. Um, you know, in between Rising Sun and Apollo um, is is demonstrative of how to build the ounces per vertical metre that we really are aimed. So the strategy is to make it bigger, uh, make this bigger. You, you know, these junior companies are valued on the scale of the projects they have, yeah. not on um, the smaller resources that become iteratively, um, you know, and I've been caught in that uh, game before and and um, you know that with the prize being deeper here you're going to see lots of deeper holes you're going to see lots of uh, drilling in between to find more veins close to the surface and try chase them down and then moving out along strike that's that's the either 
um, that we're taking here. But uh, this this has got a lot of legs still in it, uh, without a doubt. When you talk about drilling deeper, Mike, obviously the deeper you go, the more costly it is. When do you make the decision that it's it's this is how deep we're going to go? Because nine fifty at the moment, how much deeper do you think you're going to go with your drilling? Well, we'll drill a lot of kilometre holes into this, Kerry, because if we start drilling a lot of holes, a kilometre by a kilometre, kilometre long strike and then a kilometre down, if we mm. can prove it's there, that makes a pretty <laughs> substantial project, right, rather than just focusing on those few hundred, two or three hundred metres near surface. Now, it is it is uh, more costly without a doubt, and we're not going to go and drill a resource out down at a kilometre, but if we can prove the system is developing a long strike and and ideally you know we see that transition into those uh quartz carbonate free gold very high grades that we're starting to see um you know the prize is is absolutely worth following you know if it was if it was low grade material we'd be nuts drilling at the depth but it's far from that i want to understand i want uh, to help our audience understand you we're always talking gold antimony now that's not always found within gold deposits. What's the antimony side of it? What? Why is that important? And what's that showing you? you is that some? Does that give more value? I guess. Uh, the second most important metal in Victoria's history, and today, is, has been antimony and is antimony after gold. So, uh, Costafield is uh, our only antimony producer in Australia. It's the fifth largest antimony mine as a single producer on earth today, notwithstanding 82% of antimony comes out of China and Russia. So it's oh. a binary argument uh, here about antimony and supply into the Western world. It is a defence related uh, issue in many respects. It's an industrial related issue to a, to a lesser extent. Uh, and, and we're working with uh, with off takers and potential partners to rebuild a supply chain, it it, I th it is a personal viewpoint. I think gold projects alone will be harder to build without those critical metal components. That, that and I think as a general sense, you know, the 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 utility of metals will become more and more important um, as as uh, we electrify and decarbonize our economy. And 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 Simon is a huge. Uh, hugely important in in batteries. It's hugely important in semiconductors. It's hugely important from an industrial point of view uh, as a flame retardant. Every bit of plastic around our copper cabling is dosed with antimony to stop it burning if there's a short. Um, and um, and then that defence part of it, which the US is is very uh, aware of and and um, has um, has involvement in the Department of Defence in in the US. So it's important from a a strategic metal point of view, it's important for Australia. Um, with Costafield and ourselves uh, down here in Victoria with these style of deposits, we, can, we have the opportunity to have a consistent supply of feedstock for a smelter in the Western world, which doesn't exist today. Um, there is one in Oman, but uh, the feed supply there is, was purchased by China and, and those mines were shut. So it's, it is um, playing the critical metals genuinely, uh, Strategy, but um, but it will help this project be permitted and fully supported. Ah, that's interesting. But I, I also want to understand. I, I, I get it's a critical metal. Uh, it is important. Does it make? And I know I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I'm just curious. Does it make the processing of the metals more complex, or is it pretty straightforward? It's been done before, Kerry. It's it's a simple process. Yeah, the critical metals um, in general are all around the processing, not of what's in the ground. What what we have here, um, you know, critical metals is a half the period like days. Um, and and what we have here is antimony sulfide, it's stibnite, and it floats. So it's a traditional process. That's what happens at Costa Field. So uh, from the mine site, we'll produce, <laughs> we'll produce, we could produce, I should say, and without <laughs> looking too forward, uh, a a, a product that looks like will be gravity uh, uh, gold and we're going through all the met work now and an antimony concentrate now that antimony concentrate is um, produced in other projects including Costafield just down the road 
the marketing of that concentrate today uh, is dominated or the, the smelting of that concentrate is dominated by, by China. And, um, and that's where the opportunity exists for the Western world and, and, and a consistent <laughs> supply. supply. That smelters need consistent supply. You can't get little bits all around the world and apples and oranges and different chemistry and put them into the one smelter. They need a consistent feed supply. That's true for any smelter anywhere in any commodity and, and that's, that's what we can play a role in. Uh, and I know we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves because, ladies and gentlemen, they only listed in May. They've been exploring for a couple of years, getting fantastic results. I guess I want to find out a little bit more about the strategy going forward. You've got quite a lot of ground. It is a long strike, potentially, what, 10 kilometres? And you're only really in the first kilometre. Listed in May, your share price has had a terrific run. Um, some people may look at it and say, oh, well, it's kind of fully valued at the moment. I want to find out where do you think people out there that are listening to this will go, wow, this is going to be bigger and better, and there's they're only just getting started. I want to find out the strategy, if you like, going forward. <laughs> well, I think you just articulated it without me repeating it, right? It is going to get bigger <laughs> and better. Sorry uh, about that, Mike. Didn't want to take words out of your mouth, yeah, but, you know. Yeah. Mary, she's a smart one in the room here. Is <laughs> she sees all these projects? But that is, that is the strategy to make it bigger. And you know these pro these we're a sub hundred million market cap today. Go and benchmark yourself as in the listeners. Please go and benchmark. You know big high grade discoveries. They don't exist. Number one, um, that often. And uh, and when when we're talking the scales here, go and. Go and do your own maths around what the size this could be. We can't go and put those sort of calculations without putting a resource together in the public domain. And and um, you'll see that these things are worth a lot more than what Southern Cross is today. Now, that's that's predicated on, on us finding more and more and more. But this hole, 305 metres at 2.4 grams gold equivalent, uh, doubling the depth of this prospect, which was pretty good beforehand, is a great look see into the what into the roots of this system and what it may just become, or maybe it's just the top of the iceberg. Uh, Mike, I'm talking to you mid November 2022. Can't believe we're almost at the end of the year. This is crazy. Um, been a lot of rain, and my heart goes out to people that are that are struggling um, out there in Western New South Wales. Have you got any challenges down there with the amount of rain, or are the rigs all good? And where you're operating is is not too affected at the moment. Now, a lot of communities around us have suffered greatly. We're, we're fortunately uh, a slightly undulating country, the prospect. So we didn't stop drilling at all during the rains. We've got pretty good road access. You know, we've, we've uh, got a solid base on the roads that we've developed over the last year or so. So we, di we didn't stop uh, drilling. Uh, it's been wet and <laughs> very wet. Uh, some of the houses that we're renting in some of the communities Communities were 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 isolated, so we couldn't get to the houses that we were staying in, and and you know we we've helped a lot of the communities um, you know, from uh, you know sandbagging and the point of view. So we've taken our our field teams off to to support the efforts. Oh, uh, but um, yeah, fortunately, um, drilling has has not stopped. All right, what's going to be happening in twenty twenty three? Because as I said a moment ago, I'm talking to you mid November possibly the Christmas present of the rest of that drill hole. When, when are you expecting those assays to be back? I'd like to see them before Christmas. You picked it too. I mean, it's, it's uh, 21st uh, of November now, and it's a oh. sort of three to four week turnaround um, on average for our, our, our processing of drill core and, and analysis. But uh, we'll see. We'll see if we can do that. I can't make promises because I'll, I'll uh, only be making promises. But you'll, but you'll get in you trouble know. if it doesn't come back in time, yeah. Mike. <laughs> but we'll work very hard to make sure it does. All right. So three rigs at the moment. Just more drilling just in this area, Mike. I know it's the gift that keeps on get, giving and gets keeps getting bigger and better. But you have got a lot of ground. Are you going to take going to not going to going to take one of those rigs and potentially look further along? The, the project outside this area yeah no we've got uh, we've got dozens of mines along the strike mm -hmm. uh, that that need to be tested uh, but but I think I, I talked about it before we'll drill in and between the shallower zones bring those zones um, down further at depth and then extend a long strike 
um, is really the, the order because you want to build up the, the ounces per vertical meter in one of these systems to, to work towards that, that resource, even if you're not putting a resource out and, and as I say, blowing your brains out too early on, drilling it out, but you do want to certainly um, create the ounces within that coherent body. Um, that being said, we want to bring more rigs to site. You know, we are halted today, uh, subject to a capital raise. Further capital will bring more rigs, more drill meters uh, to to uh, to execute faster, and that's another key a key aspect, right? So we want to get up to five rigs. Is would be the aim. Okay, so you you go you you'll be doing doing a cap raise at some point, but get more rigs in, go faster, create more, uh, and get to understand what this project is uh, and how much bigger it could get. Mike, we're running out of time. If I could just ask you just briefly to tell us, um, you know, how I like to finish these three reasons, three reasons <laughs> why you think they should be sitting up and taking notice. You've probably got 23, but just try three. <laughs> well, this hole is uh, the game changer for the property. It, it clearly, as I've said a couple of times talking to you today, doubled the amount of uh, shoots or vein sets within mm -hmm. deposit. We've doubled the depth. It looks like it's getting higher grade at depth. You know, we've got <laughs> dozens of high grade or dozen plus high grade intersections within that 300 metres. Benchmark that across the industry, I suppose. So drill hockey, benchmark what we're getting across the industry and you won't see much like it. And notwithstanding, this is the third reason, what sits above it um, already and, and, and you've only got Four, so I have to do a uh, oh, sorry three. I'll have to do a three B. It's a cheeky know point, ladies and gentlemen, but I'll let him get away with it. <laughs> we know what we're doing. <laughs> so we they don't. know what they're doing. Yeah, and you've said right from the start how uh, how you think that this is just going to be such a big game changer. So I love having you come on and and chat about what you're doing. I know your focus is on giving value to your shareholders out there, and you're certainly doing that from a twenty cent listing back then in May to now sitting around 60, 60 cents and growing, getting better, ladies and gentlemen. And he didn't even say antimony in the three reasons. So there you go. Mike Hudson, great to see you. And we'll talk to you again in the new year. Looking forward to seeing those assay results again. Thanks, Kerry.